feedback. And then we'll have a period okay. of questions that you can unmute and um, ask at that time. Or there's a chat box here, looks like a dialogue box that you can open and ask questions at any time in the presentation. We'll make sure we answer them all. Thank you. I'll mute now. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. We're going to uh, get started on time today, so we have plenty of time to answer any questions that you might have. Um, we will be taking the time today um, to walk through the opening guidance uh, for places of worship and religious activities. Uh, my name is Joe Lynch. I'm the Division Director of Administrative Services for Health and Human Services Agency in Mariposa County. With me today, I have uh, Christina Allen, who's our Senior Administrative An Analyst of our Administration Division, and Kim Keith, who's our Program Spe Specialist in uh, Public Health. So today, we intend to walk you through a few things. The first is attestation. Uh, how did we get here? modifications to attestation that you may have seen in the news or heard uh, through your local channels. The COVID-19 guidance that's come down from the state, uh, it's a sector guidance for I think there's 19 sectors now that they've released guidance and we're trying to get to as many um, uh, sectors as possible to help alleviate any questions, um, give guidance. And then we'll talk about an MRI screening tool for febrile respiratory illness. Um, and then answer any questions you might have at the end. Uh, as I mentioned, for those of you who were on a little bit earlier, um, at the end, if you'd like to ask telephone questions is a perfect time. Prior to that, in the upper right-hand corner here, there's a chat button. Um, if you're online, if you're on the phone, you won't have them, I'm sorry. But there's a chat button where you can actually type questions, and at the end, we will go through each of the questions and answer anything that you might have. Also today, we are recording this um, for our Nerdpulsa County website so that if you have peers or partners that you also want to hear the information, they can go there and watch uh, this video to get the information that you're getting today. So with that, we'd like to get started. I'll turn it over to Dr. Allen for attestation. Thank you. Um, so on, I believe it was May 8th. Um, we, as a county, submitted our attestation to the state. So what that means is um, our county health officer had to attest to um, the safety of our community and the mitigation measures that we could put in place to safely open additional businesses. Um, so you may remember a couple weeks ago, restaurants um, and some retail businesses were able to open, and that was a direct result of our attestation being accepted from the, by the state. So um, we presented that to our board of supervisors first who approved it, then submitted to the state where it was approved um, through CDPH, and that allowed us to move into what is known as stage 2.5. So as part of that as well is these guidances that you will be seeing or have seen already uh, for places of worship. So um, it allows us to allow places of worship to open under these guidelines. So that's what we want to do today is go over these with you and allow you to answer any or ask any questions that we may be able to answer. Um, and I think there was, oh, um, also I wanted to mention that there are trigger points that we have that's in our attestation um, for toggling back if we need to. So we're ready to do that. Um, if we have a rise in cases or deaths um, due to COVID-19. So we're prepared to toggle back if we need to, and we will keep everybody apprised of that situation and um, keep you in the loop as, as best as we know, we'll get information to you. Yeah, the it, it's almost like a slide rule. And in fact, I think we're 2.5 was retails and restaurants, but places of worship weren't. 
but we haven't reached 3.0, so I think we're at 2.75. So if you think of it as we um, as we move on a slide rule, and what will happen is there are some requirements that we have, like having 35% uh, occupancy for our homeless population being able to be housed in the case of an outbreak. So that means we have to have X number of um, places for them to go. Um, so just the different rules that allow us to move up or down. You'll hear why there's a 20 day, 21 day period on this uh, process. And uh, just a note for all of you, the 21 day process started Monday. So the date, the 21 days will start from Monday and I'll explain why there's a 21 day as we go through some of the, the requirements. Um, but we're also um, with, I think it's 50 cases out of 100,000. So it's for Mariposa, if we have more than 4.5 cases in a 14 day period, it may trigger us actually moving back to 2.0. Um, that will all be guided by our public health officer, Dr. Eric Sergeyko. Um, but just want to let you know that we also have guidelines in the county for where we are in that slide rule at any given time. So with that, I will turn it over to uh, Kim Keith to go over opening requirements. Okay. okay. So um, in order to get ready and prepare for the opening, um, you will have to create a workplace specific plan. And that plan will need to actually be written. You'll need to do risk assessment, um, take a walk around your location and designate a person to implement the plan and make sure that it gets trained and communicated to all your staff, volunteers, and any other people that will be working with you. Um, you need to establish and adhere to social distancing requirements, and um, that will take a little bit of planning and preparation too once you walk your space and figure out how are you going to um, create social distancing and what markings or signage can you use to help the people know where to stand or how far six feet away is. Um, and then there are going to be some more cleaning and disinfecting procedures that need to be taken into consideration. So a lot of frequently touched items or certain um, items like um, a donation tray and other procedures that you might have. You'll need to consider how you're going to manage that. And all of the guidance can be found on the covid19.ca.gov website with other suggestions as well. So as a, as a uh, point of note, um, many of you are part of uh, larger uh, denominations, whether they're wards or groups or um, parishes or all of the different words. I can't think of them all. <laughs> it's a stunning Wednesday, but um, they may have more restrictive guidelines uh, in your uh, organizations. It is okay to be more restrictive than these opening requirements. You just can't be less restrictive than, this, than these opening requirements. And the other thing to note is when we did our attestation um, and this opening requirement would be your attestation, we had to present ours to the state. You do not. This is a self attestation. Um, so we will not as a, a county come in and verify that you've done all these. Uh, you will need to self attest to that, that you've done them. And then on a second note is um, we have several employees, Kim, myself, uh, Carrie Gibbons out of environmental health, um, who have gone out at some of the retail places and some of the restaurants and actually walk with them if, if you need assistance. So, We'll have contact information for you if you if you need assistance on this. Um, but like I said, there's there's a lot of guidance currently out there. We, we'd be happy to point you in the right direction or come to your location and, and walk with you. So we'll keep going from here. And once um, services are back in and it's open, these are some ongoing requirements. Um, it's strongly recommended that you continue to facilitate remote services if possible, and or any of the other related activities, especially for the vulnerable populations. Um, places of worship must limit their attendance to 25% of the building capacity or a maximum of 100 attendees, whichever is lower. Um, and as Joe was mentioning, in the first 21 days of the health department's review of the religious services and activities has already been done on Monday. So this just gives you the time to prepare and really go through this guidance. Yeah, so the, the 21 days, so you know, is from Monday, from Monday through your first service, it allows you to prepare. And if you have a service Friday, Saturday, Sunday, depending on your denomination, 
the, then we would have a 14 day incubation period post that first service to see if there's a spike in any cases. That's why that 21 day window was created. The first seven for you to prepare, the next 14 for us to review how those have gone on. Now, if you are a wordsmith you, and you've read the guidance from the state, you notice that we changed it from the first 21 days of county public health department approval of religious to review of religious. Uh, the county health officer will not be approving you after 21 days, will be reviewing after 21 days. Um, so you uh, don't need to wait for the county health officer to give you any kind of uh, approval of uh, continuing services. It'll be a review and if there's any changes made, it'll be made in a uh, adjustment of the phase from 2.75 to 2.5 or the continued movement from 2.75 to 3.0, if that makes sense. So I'll try to get back to you. Okay. <laughs> and also the other thing is just a reminder that all of this is to um, slow or stop the spread of COVID. So it's very important to make sure all of your staff, and all of the people are reminded to frequently wash their hands with soap and water. If the, soap, if the place to wash your hands is not available, use a hand sanitizer and make sure you have enough of all of the supplies on hand. I wanted to take a moment to talk about the febrile respiratory illness screener. So one of the requirements is that a febrile respiratory illness uh, questionnaire is given to every employee every day. Um, since probably early April, all county employees have been using a febrile respiratory illness uh, link that were sent every morning. And it's on your screen now and I'll ask in your name or your county employee, yes or no. If the answer is no, then it would, you would put in where you're located with. If you're yes, if for us, it's it'll um, pop up. And you would answer questions, are you having uh, sore throat, muscle pain, fever, chills, etc. If you answer yes, then that employee or parishioner shouldn't come to your service or to work. Um, the information is not viewed um, from a HIPAA compliance. We're not, talking to individuals, it's used for us to uh, identify whether or not we have spikes or clusters of symptoms in any location. But it really is just a good screener tool for your, for your parishioners or your employees to use prior to coming to the, your buildings um, or any service that you might have. So uh, one will be made available to you, just like I think there was a question on the chat whether or not this presentation would be made available. Yes, and we will also give you links to all of the screener tools and all of the uh, material that you see on the screen today. Other requirements, just to continue, again, to make sure everybody's safe. Um, the importance of physical distancing and signage and constant reminders to, especially as um, we get back to being social again. At first, we're really good at social distancing, but it can easily be forgotten. So make sure that everybody is constantly reminded of that. Um, also to make sure that people are encouraged to stay home if they're not feeling well. And um, we're asking that you take reasonable measures to make sure that um, people are practicing physical distancing or using face coverings properly if they're going to use them. And make sure that there's enough supplies like hand sanitizers and um, keeping all of your high touch areas clean and sanitized and allowing a little bit extra more extra time to make sure that all of those spaces are clean and sanitized maybe between services or maybe timing might be a little bit different to be flexible with those types of things we do get a fairly consistent question about face coverings as of yet our county has not implemented face coverings as a requirement of the public health order so as such it's when we talk about the proper use of face covering or encouraging face covering, which I think the guidance fairly clearly says that. Again, it's not a requirement to open because it's not part of our public health officer order for Mayor Pleasant County. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> yes, questions. What questions do you have that we can answer? Um, we will do our best to get through all of them without a lot of feedback. There we go. Perfect chat. Question from Jill. So parishioners need to fill out the FRI 
how will that work? How do they get the link? Or is it just the people who work at the church? The first years don't have to fill it out. It's just recommended. Um, when I say recommended, it gives us a lot of information about spikes and symptoms. Um, we would really request that all employees do. We will give you the link. Now, just a note, um, Joe, the, the, the information isn't sent to you or individual businesses, churches, or um, restaurants. It's, it's sent to um, Dr. Nunez, is one of our employees that works down in Merced, to collect from a um, epidemiology, epidemiology perspective or a um, kind of a screening of our community. What's most important is that you, if you can temperature take people that are coming in that they have fevers, they won't come back, or they'll, they'll go home for the day, or they don't make it to your building at all uh, for service if they're not feeling well. If a wedding is being held in a church, was, what does that mean? Can they have more than 10, can to be a practicing social distancing and or face us? Yes, uh, it's 25% of your occupancy of your building or 100, which is ever, whatever's less. So the, the rule around uh, 10 people gathering at one time. Um, now, if you're having a, like a, a meal, I would go to the restaurant guidance and it says it's, you could have groups of people like, I, you know, I have a, a lot of kids and um, if I had to separate all my kids out of dinner, it would be awesome and quiet. However, it would be <laughs> unnecessary because we rode in the same cars. So we are one kind of one unit. Um, but yes, you're allowed to have more than 10 in your church. So 25% of your church's occupancy or 100, whichever is less. <laughs> Great question. Remember, you can also unmute yourself and ask a question if you wish, or the chat box is there too. So um, while we're waiting for any other questions that we might have, um, as always, we have contact information on our county website that will be available. If after you leave the call today, you think of questions that you might have, or you talk to other people, or you have scenarios like we're just asked about the wedding and you want to know, uh, you can certainly um, contact us and we'll help however we can. What about weddings outdoors? You know, it's similarly to, um, it's the social distancing standpoint. I don't think there's been a lot of guidance around parks yet. No, we haven't had a lot about um, outdoor weddings, and I know it's um, a question that's asked us, of us a lot. And um, we just don't have any guidance from the state yet to give any to you all about weddings. Um, the one thing I would say is uh, I would think there might be something coming out shortly about outdoor events. Yeah because we are looking at schools, graduations, things of that nature. I think you, if you watch the news at all, I think a lot of different um, counties have tackled that. I think there'll be fairly quick guidance as our school districts are attempting to um, work through how do they do it. It would follow the same guidance, how many people can be there, the distance between, et cetera. Um, Lisa Garrett, so face masks are required but not mandatory during your churches. Uh, required, yeah. Um, so face masks are not required um, from the county. Um, when I talked to Dr. Eric about it, he stated that in a lot of church services, there's um, a lot of vocalization, whether it's singing or talking, and that it would be really helpful. Um, he would like to see people wear masks in church if we're worn properly. Uh, however, it's not required at this point in our county. What about door handles uh, or bathroom as well? Um, white frequently touch surfaces down often. Um, you know, push handles are best. If you, if you have push doors rather than handle doors, that'd be great. Um, again, it just goes to the normal. Um, During the high, um, high traffic time, um, prop the doors open if possible. So not every person has to open the door as they're entering or leaving the building. Um, and have a plan in place and make some of the volunteers or some of your staff responsible so they know exactly what high touch areas they're cleaning and how frequently they're cleaning. Um, and just limit things that are unnecessary 
Um, so if there are certain items that are for decoration or other things that could be touched that are unnecessary, just remove them as one last thing to, to see. Yeah, I've seen quite a few businesses put uh, paper towels near the door. Mm -hmm. So you can use paper towel and then drop it in a trash can right next to the door so that you're not physically touching the door at all. Um, and then kind of the tough part about it is, you know, when we go to our services, a lot of times we're there, we haven't seen people in a while, there's hugging and there's handshaking, is doing your best to limit that, to eliminate that at this point. Um, and so it is, it's something that you kind of frequently have to remind people of because it's such a, you go to back to a place that's a normal place for you and you do your normal things. And at this moment, what, what we're really working towards with all of our faith-based um, uh, groups is, the better we adhere to these standards, the better chance we have of continuing to move that slide rule towards phase three and beyond. Um, and so, although we talk about things being required, not required, it's really about doing the most you can do, ask the questions that you need to ask, have us come see it or walk through your business, or through your business, through your churches or, or, or synagogues or mosques. And, um, try to make it as safe as possible for the people that are coming there. And that's the goal. And then when it comes to FRI, when, you, when that's done, it gives us the best information that we can get so that we can continue to try and keep our county safe. I would tell you that although we've had 16 cases in the county, we're surrounded by counties that have had far greater cases than we have. And it's, it's really because there's been a very specific measured approach to uh, a thoughtful measured approach and we're lucky to have a doctor that worked at the CDC, but um, you know, it's, it's people working together to get this right. If a wedding is being held inside a church, what does that mean? Can they have more than 10 people practicing social? I think I answered that one. Yes, it's 25% of your occupancy, it's, or 100 people, whichever is less. Yes, if you're maintaining social distancing. Yes, if you have a proper cleaning. Um, and face wax masks, although not required, um, it, it tends to be more in the, in the service type scenario. Do we have any specific regulations or, or ideas about how to sanitize porous surfaces such as cloth pews? Yeah, so what's that? There, yeah. there are some guidance in the um, gate guidance that went out. They do recommend that you get a disposable cover that you can change in between services on porous pews. Um, so I don't know if that looks like um, paper or plastic, um, but that is in the guidance and it is recommended. It's not required, but it is recommended. Um, otherwise, a wipe down in between services, I think is your best bet, um, the back of the pews and, and the seat itself. Pardon me, I have a question. I'm a pastor locally. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Um, so this 21-day period starts Monday the 1st. So our first services would be after this Monday, and then it would uh, be checked after a 14-day period. Am I understanding that properly? Uh, slightly off. No, the the... 21 day period started on the 25th of May. So it started two days ago. So the 21 period, so the 21 day period, so that you could have services this weekend, whichever day your services might be on. Um, and that would be your, so from the 25th to this weekend would be your preparation time. And then mm -hmm. 14 days later, which is around June 14th. So I don't know the exact date, but the middle of June. I still have an exact date. Uh, 14 days would be June 14th. June 14th, June 15th. Yeah, so June 14th mm -hmm. would be the day um, that would be the end of that 21 day period. Did I answer your and question? Then, yes. Um, and you said that you can also send <clears throat> assessors to your facility. Um, did I get that right? Or that yes. they would be available by request? Yes, we, we come out and uh, walk you through what 
social distancing looks like and even look at the layout and give you um, uh, guidance, advice. And, and where would that take place? At our facility or at somewhere in the county? Yeah, no, we would prefer to walk your facility. Okay. All right. And how do we contact you to schedule that if we were to? Uh, we'll give you yeah. right there. Okay. On your screen, I don't know if you can see it, but it's Mariposa COVID 19 at gmail.com or 209 259 1332. And I'll leave this. Uh, screen up for the remainder of the question period. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so if we can self test that we can follow the, uh, and the following are guys, can we start holding gatherings, say, on the 31st? You just answer that. Yes, yeah. you can. Yep. And the guidance can be viewed there. We have a, and then, uh, a thing on there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so absolutely. All right, so I don't see any other questions. I'll go ahead and do this up for a few minutes. Um, I, even after we're done, I'll just leave it on the screen for a few. Uh, so if any of your peers or partners haven't seen this, it will be on the website, uh, county website for you to review. You can go back if there's any questions. You can certainly email Kimberly, Kim, or myself. You see the two emails there, or email MariposaCovid19 at Gmail if you have any questions. Again, we're, we're working together to, to uh, move us all forward safely. So if you do self-attest your facility, um, you know, do your best to do your best because our community is, uh, we're keeping them as safe as possible. So, but if you have any questions, let us know. Um, this isn't the end of this. We'll, we'll certainly be around uh, move from phase to phase. There will be other um, of these meetings as we go from phase to phase, or if there's any other sector guidance that comes out, if you do have other businesses or restaurants or any of those types, those are already on the website. You can go back through and watch those as well. Um, but without any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and leave this up. Anyone that, so that's, I'm going to put our, us on mute. This will be on the screen. If you do have a question, feel free to chime in while we're sitting here. We'll be happy to answer. Or if you put it in the chat, we will capture it and get an answer to you. Let's see what. I have often heard that 10 people were all quoted. Is it might apply to restaurants or church views due to the lesson for people who said you could need to be the same household or different households? So it's preferred that the same households stay together. So um, within the guidance as well, it does recommend that you keep um, households together in a pew and then if you can um, skip a pew until and then fill the next one. Um, so it is preferred that we keep households together and don't commingle. Um, that'll keep people as safe as possible. Yeah, in in our business, we tend to hear cohort a lot, you know, cohort of people or your bubble, yeah. whatever your bubble is of people. Um, so, yeah, good question. Awesome. Well, you all have a, a great day. We're going to leave this up here. We'll go on mute. But if any other questions come up, we'll answer them or you can email them. This will be happy to answer them for you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.